So welcome everyone. Thank you for joining uh, this um, panel discussion, Q&A with the Selenium Committee. Thank you for being here virtually from different parts of the world. And I just want to uh, say on behalf of everyone first that this team and many others behind the scene who could not make it over here as well, you have made test automation space very interesting, challenging, fun, and have helped and impacted millions of people, and I don't think I'm exaggerating, with your contributions in more ways than you can imagine. Jim already shared some stories around this uh, earlier uh, about what he had some people uh, say to him, and that is not an understatement. So thank you all on behalf of everyone. And uh, audience, can I get a huge round of thumbs up for this team? Oh, wow. Thank awesome. you, everyone. <laughs> okay. So uh, let's keep the energy going uh, and let's start. Uh, to start off with, there could be uh, quite a few people in the audience who unfortunately do not know much about you or what your key focus area on the <clears throat> committee is, on the project is. So if you can quickly you know, go around and maybe we start off on the images as we see on screen. Manoj, if you can do a quick introduction of yourself, what is your primary focus on the project? And uh, what is one interesting fact about yourself you can share? and then you can pass it on to the person next to you and we'll proceed that way. Cool, thanks, thanks Anand for your uh, generous introduction. Uh, thanks folks, everyone for joining in. Uh, I am Manoj, as, as most of you know, and I've been in the project for uh, many years now, uh, but now on and off actively. My major focus with the project is mainly on documentation and website. And right now my focus is on the project leadership committee and conference organizing. But once I free up, I intend to go back and, and contribute some code on the task of findings. And I've done a few bit of things on Fluent Selenium and Docker uh, on and off. And, and that's my uh, contributions to Selenium project. And uh, hoping to do more, uh, striving, uh, finding free time. And uh, fun fact about me, I, I love sports and I love running and, and, and uh, uh, I don't know if uh, you can message me and, and, and ask if it's uh, true or not. Uh, I've finished my 5K in uh, 17 minutes. Five kilometers what? in 17 minutes. And I, I, I just I will just leave it up there to see whether it's it's as true or not. <laughs> and I'll pick next. Let's take all uh, time to run, Manoj. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll I'll pick uh, Diego next. Hi, uh, so I'm Diego. Um, I am like in different parts of the project nowadays. Uh, Docker Selenium, Grid, uh, documentation. So I think the interesting fact is that I don't have so much focus because I'm trying to do uh, different things at the same time. Um, but also a person who is very much into sports and uh, yeah, food. That was one of the main things that I miss about the conference this year, like eating Indian food. Um, so I miss being there. Uh, but that's me. So if you need anything from the project, I spend most of my time in the Slack channel, uh, Bingus, and, and we're happy to help you and welcome the, welcome you to the community. I'll pick uh, Jim. Thank you, Mano. Uh, thank you, Diego. Um, I am, um, my name is Jim Evans. I am mostly responsible in the project for the .NET bindings. Uh, I also am responsible for the Internet Explorer driver. Uh, and those, uh, I'm, I'm a member of the project leadership committee, uh, uh, and uh, those are the things that I spend a lot of time working on on the project. Uh, you can find me uh, almost always in the uh, Selenium IRC channel or Slack channel, um, uh, almost always during um, U.S. East Coast business hours, almost always. And um, uh, so, feel free to reach me out there. Reach out to me there if you're curious or have questions. Uh, I am uh, a fun fact about me. I am in addition to being uh, a, uh, a computer dude. Uh, I am also a uh, singer, songwriter, recording artist, and um, have put out a couple of albums. And um, uh, that's, that's, that's the fun fact about me. I'm going to pass things over to, uh, to, to Shri. Uh -oh. We can't hear you, dude. 
Uh oh. Oh, we still can't hear you, Sri. There we go. There we don't go. No, oh. we don't go. Well, let's move to Simon, and then we can come back to Sri as as he uh, yeah. as he as, as he we figure out his audio challenges. Simon, my friend. Hi. Uh, yeah. So I'm I'm Simon Stewart. Um, I, I I created WebDriver and thought it would take six months to finish, which shows that I am also a software engineer uh, with the classic ability of a software engineer to estimate time. <laughs> um, I am the lead of the project, and I took over from Jason Huggins quite a long time ago. I'm the co-editor of the W3C specification. Um, I look after the Java, Java bindings. I uh, corral various people to do various things at various times, and um, I just do like stuff to help wherever I can. Um, interesting fact about me, I, I guess the sport thing is I love surfing, but I am absolutely terrible at it. Um, and I'm also notoriously unable to use an email client. Um, so the best way to get hold of me is probably either through through uh, the IRC channel, the Slack channel, or just ping me on on Twitter, where I appear to live. Um, Shri, welcome back. Yep, Simon. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Great, oh. great. So uh, what happened is I think so yesterday's Diego's uh, grid workshop broke my laptop entirely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> so uh, this is Harsha, and I'm the new member of Selenium team. And uh, I have started contributing through Selenium documentation. And uh, recently, I have uh, have uh, contributing to the Selenium uh, code base. And uh, I have started with JavaScript because I love JavaScript. And the most fun fact is uh, I love breaking things. And later, I realize and I start contributing to it. <laughs> That's awesome. Great. Uh, thanks for all the uh, work that you're doing and the fun facts that you shared. Sri, let's start with you uh, as a first question, uh, since you're the newest member on this uh, team here. The prior Selenium conferences, you have been on the other side in the audience, listening to this yes. great panel about what work is happening, what they have been doing. Yes. So it's a multi-part question. How does it feel to come on stage and share stage with uh, these great folks. And second, what is that one challenge that really stands out to you, which you faced in your journey to get on stage? And how did you overcome that? OK, uh, so um, as, as I said earlier in the previous uh, Firebase chat, uh, it has started with the Selenium 2018 conference where I was in the committers panel. And you know, uh, I was the last venture in that Selenium conference. Like over, like, there are like 400 people. And I was sitting in the last chair of the Selenium conference hall. <laughs> I was listening to the Manu's uh, speech and the Simon's speech. And later, I have decided to be the Selenium contributor because uh, you know Selenium is an open source uh, uh, open source thing, and a lot of people are spending their uh, time to uh, uh, contribute to the Selenium to make it better. So I have uh, I have uh, I have made my goal like okay, I should at least contribute to the Selenium. And I, and I today I feel very happy to be here with the committers panel because it was always my dream. Uh, it, it was the dream set at 2018 Selenium conference. And when I met in this, when I met Simon in the uh, Fixer Bug became, became a committer workshop, and when I saw all people in the Selenium panel uh, committers panel, so uh, the most challenge um, I feel is like you know uh, it took some time to me to understand the Selenium code base and how to uh, create a pull request or how to raise the issue or something because uh, it took one year uh, to get my first PR accepted uh, in the Selenium code base. <laughs> so. Uh, even I, I always love that because uh, even it was an interesting fact, you know, how I got, uh, I, how, uh, what, what was my first PR merge is the typo error that I fixed in the JS bindings. And the Simon was the one who accepted the PR and said, thank you. So it, it is the journey how I get started with the Selenium code base. <laughs> Great. Thanks for sharing that. I'm sure that's very inspiring um, and motivating for others as well doesn't matter which bench or where in the hall you are sitting. You can do a lot of things and you can get up on stage as well. So great to see you over here. So before I ask uh, the next question to the panel, I, uh, to the audience, 
any questions you have for the panel that you would like to ask, please ask that in the Q&A section of the discuss panel. And we'll pick up the questions uh, based on the top voted ones that are there. So while we get the questions rolling, uh, I'll start off with a question for the panel. And uh, I'll go around in this case uh, asking folks. The question is, with Selenium 4 around the corner or coming on the New Year, Chinese New Year or Christmas time, depending on the way how you look at it, what is your favorite feature or capability in Selenium 4 that you are looking forward to getting out there and why? And uh, Diego, maybe we'll start with you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we have several cool features that will enable the community to do better testing or more expensive testing in, uh, through WebDriver. But I, I feel that the best thing we're doing right now in the project and taking the opportunity that Selenium 4 is coming out is is making the, the the environment more welcoming for everyone. So working on the governance document, working on better ways to contribute to documents, to the code base. So this is also part of Selenium 4. It's not only the features, but all the surrounding environment that is more open and more welcoming. We have documentation now in, I think, seven different languages, uh, Chinese, German, Spanish, and so on. So more people can actually interact with Selenium. And maybe this will play quite well in the long term that people from different countries and, and languages will actually be able to access the, the project and will end up contributing. So for me, that's maybe a non-technical feature, but it's the most valuable for me right now. That's amazing. It will have more people be able to use it in an effective way. Uh, and that's a great feature. Now, thanks for that. Uh, Jim? Well, I don't know if it's necessarily my favorite feature um but i'm a uh, I, i'm 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 pleased that we are able to offer uh something related to uh browser debugging protocols and a bi-directional communication mechanism uh between the browser or the driver and the selenium code um i'm i'm looking forward to seeing that evolve over time as certain uh, spec, uh, as, as we start to get the, the, the bi-directional communication protocol uh, formalized in a specification process, that'll make things a lot better uh, for that. But uh, I'm, I'm very happy to see, to, to see uh, bi-directional uh, communication in some form uh, available uh, in Selenium 4. Awesome. Thanks for that. Uh, Shri? Um, so when coming to this uh, favorite feature or something, you know, uh, the Selenium is the favorite uh, of the bunch of uh, favorite features, you know. I can't pick some feature and I can't say directly. So Selenium as part of whole is the greatest thing. So uh, when coming to the uh, Selenium 4, what I like is whatever the Jim said, like uh, WebDriver bi-directional protocol and the relative locators, what Simon mentioned yesterday, and also the main code documentation part where people get started. So these are all the favorite things of mine, and I love contributing to these things. These are my favorite features here. Awesome. Simon? Oh, favorite thing? I, the, okay, there's so many nice nice bits of technology in here, like uh, the CDP stuff, the, the support for the debugging protocol, um, Selenium, it's certainly in the Java bindings, hopefully and everything else, can support more than one version of Chrome at the same time, which is kind of what you expect to be able to do, but appears to be unique. Um, the new grid is going to be a lot of fun. Um, support for Docker, the support for open telemetry and being able to sort of introspect into it is uh, is really good. And I, I love the sort of renewed energy that the project currently has right now. Like if I had to pick any one thing, it would be the renewed energy around the project. I think I love that. Wow. wow. That's great. Manoj? It's always tough if you go last of the people, right? You run out of options and... and... <laughs> Um, <laughs> Relative locators, they're awesome. <laughs> I think that's something Harsha picked up. Uh, and I was really hoping to share something around the Selenium grid, which again you picked up. Uh, but nevertheless, I'll talk about it. Um, so I think the most interesting part for me is the new improvements that we're making in Selenium grid. Um, if you were in the workshop yesterday, I think in Thursday, we would have covered uh, pretty extensively about it. Uh, and more particularly, um, 
we have changed the architecture in the way how we work uh, just you know moving from a hub and node to probably a five components right now and uh, more around the tracing cap- capabilities i think a lot of companies been a consultant i know there is a momentum and shift towards observability right and and having that sort of capability coming in uh, from running your end to end test is you know, what 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 more you could ask for and that's to me the best part as part of selenium for great now thanks for sharing oh, what this question actually did is did is it gave a overview about a lot of different interesting cool features that are coming up in selenium 4 and the next obvious question related with that is i'm going to pick it up which has got the highest vote when can we expect selenium 4 stable version launch <laughs> so shall i have a go at that <laughs> um literally the doorbell just went um <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's an excellent question uh we are working as fast as we can um there is a sort of kanban board of like tasks that we need to do things that are in progress and things that have been completed on the github project and and you can find those um pretty easily and and when they're done they're done and and we'll ship selenium 4 um practically uh i said this yesterday i think we are on the last alpha of um selenium 4 and at that point i think we've got all the features that we think we need to have but they may not be completely stable and then we'll use the betas to get them stable based on the feedback that people are giving us um So I mean I hope to have it out by Chinese New Year. <laughs> notice else folks, like- notice folks that he hasn't actually specified which year. I have to be very <laughs> clear because the last time we had a joke about Christmas being available by Christmas it got misinterpreted in some of the blog posts out there that it was coming by that coming Christmas and <laughs> we're not specifying a date. Unfortunately and and here's the reality of things folks. Um all of us are, are are simply volunteers right we all have day jobs we all have jobs that we work to get to to pay the bills pay the mortgage feed our families we don't get paid to work on selenium so um th- that's one of sort of the barriers in, in terms of being able to uh to 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 produce a hard and fast date because sometimes you know if i get a project at work that that has to be done by a certain deadline i'm getting paid to do that and uh, you know if i don't do that I I lose my house. So so um so you know I I understand the the necessity and the desire to want a a a hard and fast date but please I I would appreciate your patience if if we can that we can't speci- specify a hard and fast date just because life sometimes get in the way of 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 us of us being able to 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 write all the code that we want to uh as volunteers. I I do have one thing to add which is like I know we haven't got 4.0 out the door yet but if you're using just the local end if you're using the the language bindings which I think most people are and you're not using like grid you're not using um some of the sort of super weird uh, some of the server side features then you could try dropping in each of the bindings now to your project and they should just work and when I say they should just work I mean they should work properly rather than they barely work right um if they don't work you should let us know um there are some things that we've deprecated in the last 3.x release so 3.14159 in the in the java tree and if you rely on those then they may have disappeared um but if your code compiles cleanly on Sol- with selenium 3 it should just work with selenium 4 um so you can start giving us feedback on that right now that's great point so uh, and that's also very um, in tune for being very in tune with reality gym thanks for that aspect as well so uh, moving to the next question with the growing capability of selenium can we expect open source support extended for desktop app automation as well oh i know this one i know the answer to this one me too me too but go ahead There, there there's already there there's already a uh, a desktop application um uh project that uses the selenium uh or the web driver protocol to automate uh desktop applications on on for windows in particular um it's it's called winium 
and it's available out there. Uh, I believe Appium has support for it already. Uh, so it, it's, it, it's, it's, uh, it, you know, I, I, the Selenium project going forward, just for, just speaking for the Selenium project, we're going to, we're going to, uh, we're going to concentrate on browsers because that's what we do. Um, but, but there are other, other companion projects already, already in existence, uh, that, that, that do desktop application automation using the Selenium API and the Selenium and the web driver protocol. So that's already, that, that's already working. Exactly, and they also have an integration for apps that run on, on Mac OS. So Windows and Mac, it's covered by a couple yeah. of integrations that Appium has. So would be cool to see more demos of that. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> the next question. Hey. There you go. Mac Virginia. Virginia. <laughs> hey. Just to get more <laughs> likes. <so. laughs> Yeah, yes, some, some more some more likes for Matilda, please. <laughs> <laughs> Matilda. So, yeah, the next question Sorry, I, is uh, any labels or way to identify easy to fix a bug for people who are new to contribute? Not yet. Uh, to be honest, this is something we we have. We haven't spent a lot of time, but what we are focusing in the last two weeks, because there is this upcoming month, there is the Hacktoberfest event, and we are going to spend at least I'm committing myself, and, and I think David will do some some work with, like his team will do some of its work, uh, and we'll start to uh, like refine some open, open GitHub issues so people can jump into them and, and be part of that event. Um, so we're working on that. It's something that we identified that, we should improve, and, and we're, we're going to do that something. We're going to do something soon uh, during this week, this week that starts on Monday, uh, to, to be better than that. Yeah. Uh, we do have a new triage team. So maybe maybe we could go through some of those bugs. We have a few issues, right? Quite a few, yes. So that, uh, Looking at what the triage team is prioritizing, that potentially is one way to look at as what uh, Simon is suggesting, right? So, yes. Okay. Um, the next question, do you think iOS integration with Docker will be a reality soon? Define soon? Uh, <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> so, I mean, Docker is a containerization technology built upon a bunch of things that are sitting inside the Linux kernel. Um, and iOS is not Linux. So I don't, I mean, what can you say? It's, it, it, I have no idea. No, I mean, iOS is an operating system for mobile devices and Docker is running on desktop, uh, operating system. So I, I cannot fit a triangle in a circle somehow. <laughs> Well, if the circle is big enough. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if we had a really big circle, circle, it would all yeah. work. Yeah. I think the question is coming from, um, there, are, there are Docker images for Appium Android, I guess. I think that's where uh, the question is coming from. But yeah, I think the answer is there. I think it's, it's sort of different. I mean, I've, I've written Docker images for Android before. And what you do is you get the, the Intel version of Android running on the Intel version of Linux running on, and you expose the KVM and, and you do all sorts of nasty hacks. It is, it's like the sort of Tower of Babel, right, where you've just got everything piled up, and then magically you have Android. Um, yeah. Okay. Hopefully that gives some clarity on which direction to expect that integration to happen. Um, the next set of questions are, interesting in a different way uh, because it's not directly related to Selenium in that sense. But um, what are your thoughts on in-sprint automation? I'm, I'm not sure what that means. Do we mean things like like Jira tracking and Kanban boards and swim lanes? Or do we mean we should be writing tests during the sprint or? Correct, correct. So oh, writing. Uh, uh, completing all aspects of development and testing, including automation in that same sprint. 
I mean, what, how could you even do it any other way? I am perplexed by that. Like, like a, a mature software developer doesn't just write code, right? Nat Price said he could write code really quickly as long as he doesn't have to prove it doesn't work. But that's no use to man nor beast, right? What you need is to be able to demonstrate that the feature you have been working on during a sprint functions. And one of the ways you do that is you put the automated tests around it. Um, and unless you have those tests, you can't really say that you have completed the feature, in in my humble opinion. Um, does anyone else have anything to add to that or disagree with me violently? I think it makes sense. Uh, I think uh, I've come across a lot of these questions in, in at least uh, in, in the local events, and, and I know the background because uh, I've, I've seen a lot of uh, people are moving into this sort of momentum because um, as far as I've known, you know, we used to do massive, massive number of tests. Like I've heard companies and projects having, you know, uh, 5,000, 6,000 number of Selenium tests. And, you know, from a team, <laughs> I, I can see that reaction. Yeah, um, so when they move into the real agile world, I think that's where the question is coming from. Like, do you believe in instant automation, how it's done? I think in my opinion, um, as, as Simon says, I think as long as it's, it's part of your definition of done, like you should try to do that. Uh, as long as it's automated or manual, uh, I, I believe quality comes from first in that space. And, and yeah, it is very important. Yeah. Any other thoughts anyone would like to add on that? No? <laughs> OK. Yeah, no, yeah, a lot of processes, practices, uh, collaboration needs to happen to make that uh, work in um, complete automation in sprint. So I completely agree. That should be the way you need to get to. Also what Manoj shared about a few thousand tests, uh, that is one aspect, but also how many more are you looking to add in each sprint? And why is that as big a challenge to complete in that sprint itself? And that would be a question that I would also ask and focus on that aspect, right? But yes, there's nothing stopping from completing the activity in that sprint. So just my additional two cents on that question. <laughs> but, um, the next one is Selenium focused. What is the biggest challenge currently the Selenium team is or project is facing in terms of competing with other market leading tools? Uh, so market leading tools. Um, I think if the language is anything other than JavaScript, uh, I think Selenium or projects that, that they use Selenium are, are probably like the clear runaway leaders. Um, I think we dropped the ball a bit with JavaScript. Uh, and in the JavaScript world, um, there does appear to be this acceptance that we should have a, everything should be based off Chrome and the CDP. And um, so you get, you get these, the, this tooling that, that, that's based on that. Um, I think the way that we're responding to that is actually probably the healthiest in the in the long term, which is um, first of all to take advantage of the underlying protocol, but not to expose it as the raw protocol. Like it's there if you need it, but just you know relying on that to write your test leads to things that are incredibly brittle because that protocol is tied intimately to the browser, and it changes with every every release, which is why sort of if you update. Puppeteer, for example, you get a specific version of Chrome, and that is what your tests use. Um, I think one of the things that we we can do to respond, and which I'm endlessly grateful to, to Shri for being here, is to improve our JavaScript bindings. Right, there is definitely work to be done around that, um, and I think that would be a, a sensible thing to do. Um, and then the other thing is, lots of the competing frameworks have. Um, they're like batteries included, right? They come with test runners and formatters and la da da and things for downloading various bits and pieces. And what we've said is, like, we're a browser automation framework, and so we're just going to automate the browser, and you will need to figure out how to pull those other things together that you need. And maybe making that a bit easier is going to be something that's going to be more important moving forward, particularly as things like MS Edge driver is tied to very, very tightly to versions of, of Edge. Um, and Ditto for, for Chrome and Chrome Driver. That's me done. Does anyone else want to say something? <laughs> well, 
Oh, go ahead, Jim. Go I was just going to say, I think, I think that, that, that also one of the frustrating things about, um, about the selenium, uh, uh, about, about so-called, or, you know, as, as the question put it, uh, competing uh, uh, projects is that selenium, because it's been around for a while, um, has a reputation or has a, uh, a certain, uh, you know, it's, it, it's not, it's not new and shiny, so it's not exciting. So, so people don't get excited about using it because it's not new and shiny. Um, and, you know, I, I I'm, I'm not there, there, there. There's a reason that the keystone in an arch is, it has been around for thousands of years because it just works. It's 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 the right way to it's right. It's the right way to engineer that kind of thing. Um, and it's 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 challenging to see some other frameworks choosing paths that Selenium chose once before and rejected for going a, in, in favor of a way that we believe is better. Uh, but other, but but those other competing projects being uh, seen as better because they're newer. Um, I guess that's what they, I mean. So so communication of 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 hey, you know, selenium has been around for a while, yes, but it it still is a great way to do things, and it's based on an open standard that's that's built on that that's supported by multiple browser vendors as opposed to uh, as opposed to other solutions that rely on a uh, a, 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 a technology that's controlled by a single entity that that could change out from underneath you at any time, uh, without warning. So that 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 kind of communication and getting that that uh, getting that understanding across in in a way that that um, that resonates with people is is a real challenge. But what I wanted to add to that, um, I, I see as the biggest challenge right now is the large amount of information that is going around the different projects. And I strongly believe that the information is not well shaped. And I I am on the position, this is most more my personal opinion, that, that if you want to choose a different tool like Cypress or Puppeteer or Playwright, if you understand and you can give reasons why you choose that again, instead of selenium then i'm i i'm totally with you but most of the time people are choosing things because it's new or it's different or it's like having automatic weights so that's the most uh, important challenge i see that people are not getting informed before choosing a tool and to go with the comments that the, the were made a moment ago uh this is based on standards and all browsers will support it so if you want reliable and strong uh, automation in the long term with browsers, like stay with WebDriver uh, and Selenium will be the, the best bet. I think that the, that's the main challenge I see with the large amount of misinformation going. I think just to add my two cents, um, completely second what you know, Simon, Jim and Jacob has been saying around. Um, I think if I, if I recollect and, and put it in summary, I think uh, newer the better. Um, uh, what other uh, projects, market leading for tools that you're mentioning apart from JavaScript, to be this point on uh, using using tools for a longer time. I think it all, all completely makes sense. And, and I think if you look at the other projects per se, I think there's also Jason Huggins who was tweeting it, uh, tweeting about it last month or last couple of weeks back is, uh, it's all about the way that has been projected and, and the messaging that has been gone through. Where, uh, in a nutshell, if you see, it's all Selenium RC's uh, architecture, um, and there is a reason why we moved to WebDriver, and and uh, it's all about JavaScript sandbox, you know. Um, and if you look at deep dive, as Tiago mentioned, and see what really works and what is the uh, problem that you want to solve, I think that will make then it will make a lot of really sense to choose which tool that you want to. Asha, I think that will do a round of yeah. So uh, I'm not sure because there are a lot of test automation engineers who are new to the test automation thing. So the best, the first thing they do is they look for automation tools, and uh, basically the Selenium will be the first one. And there will be a lot of best 2020 automation tools in the list of of 10. So um, what I can suggest to people. Uh, 
is like uh, there is no other tool i see which implements the pure web driver uh, protocol here so i see the selenium as the only tool which supports the pure web driver uh, which implements the web driver specification so i know also it supports cross browser testing like uh, in many browsers like firefox chrome and whatever the browser is you know uh, if i take any other different tool uh, it may it, it it may support the web driver specification but it only sticks to the one browser vendor or um, they support cross browser testing but they does not uh, uh, follow the web driver specification so i see such kind of things with other tools but uh, when i when i suggest to the people i say like okay go for the selenium it is the pure web driver uh, implementation so it is the best choice for the tool okay great thank you everyone for those answers and details we have a ton of questions that are there you know so i'm going to try and pick in interest of time pick the ones which have uh, most relevant from the new upcoming selenium feature as well or uh, release as well so currently uh, we use third party reporting libraries for generating reports in future versions can we expect to generate report within selenium uh, i mean test reports depend on your test runner and we don't include a test runner with selenium because we do browser automation um, so i don't see it in the Java tree. Um, the nice thing is that actually gives you a lot of freedom, right? You can pick the tool that you think is is most appropriate. Um, in line with my previous comments, though, I think it would be nice if we like, like said, if you use this, then we recommend using this as well, and that'll make it easier for you. Great, thanks, Simon. The next one probably is a more involved question. How is the bi-directional protocol work? You know, how does it work behind the scene? Any performance implications? And also, what are the difference between uh, other tools such as Puppeteer, Playwright, which is also bi-directional by uh, nature? So it's a loaded question. Sh shall I have a go at it again then? Um, uh, you, okay, you're so welcome to. <laughs> Uh, so uh, performance implications. The thing with Selenium, uh, the, the original web driver protocol is it's request response, right? Um, and it's not very chatty. It does a lot of stuff with each request. Um, the thing with debugging protocols is they are incredibly chatty. They are very, very verbose. And when you're running on, a, on, on your local machine, actually, that doesn't matter too much. But as you start doing things like running on, on a grid, for example, where you have your test running locally and you're up in you know, source labs or browser stack or something like that, um, then you will start seeing that sort of bi-directional protocol having a performance implication, which is why having the request response thing is, is really useful. Um, right now, the way that we are implementing this stuff is actually on top of the Chrome debugging protocol. Um, so we are taking advantage of the same underlying tool set that tools such as Puppeteer are doing. The other thing we're doing is we are working with the W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium, on the WebDriver BiDi specification. And a lot of those people in the working groups have been involved with debugging protocols and, and, and particularly from the Chrome team uh, and, and Microsoft as well. And working on um, that, that specification, we should be seeing the underlying protocol used by the browsers uh, start being exposed more more like the, the, the standardized version. Um, so ultimately, I think we're going to end up with a bi-directional protocol that is a superset of what we have in the current web driver, but with the current web driver being available uh, for bandwidth constrained usages. Jim, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, no, you you covered basically what I was going to to, to mention was that, that that currently we're basing off of the Chrome debugging protocol, but going forward, um, going forward, we 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 want we're working with the the standard group to make us to to, to pr produce a standardized version that then all all browser vendors can take advantage of uh, and implement, and 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 that's really the key for cross browser work, right? It's 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 getting something that is standardized that a browser vendor itself can support in its tools uh, in order to, so that, so that uh, a, 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 a project like Selenium doesn't have to worry about um, 
six different dialects of a given protocol of how things how things <laughs> enter off, right? Makes sense. Thank you. Uh, the next questions are hopefully not as loaded. Uh, so, are we seeing any features in Selenium four or future versions to be paid features? No. Uh, no. Absolutely not. I think we've got a consensus in within a couple of seconds. <laughs> that was super fast. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. The next one also is probably a very quick question. When is the next Selenium conference? Okay. Uh, I can take that up. Uh, the next one is uh, 2021 October, November. We haven't finalized the exact date yet, um, but it's going to be fall. Uh, full season in the U.S. Chicago, um, somewhere around October or November. It's going to be in Chicago. Yes, that's it, Simon. Uh, 2021, though. <laughs> You'll get a new teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So in interest of time, I'm going to ask one last question, uh, and we'll go around for everyone in this one. So it's, again, a two-part question. What are the different things you have used Selenium for other than automating tests? And the second part to that is, if the project did not exist, what else would you use? Manoj, la, uh, you were last in the earlier round. Do you want to start? I need some time to think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. I can answer the first question. I can answer the first question very, very, very quickly because I have a, I have a use case right away that I know I've used I've used Selenium for that's not for testing. Um, okay. Uh, my my beautiful wife is a medical professional. Uh, she is a mental health professional and, and has her own uh, mental health counseling practice. And we needed to move our um, uh, electronic medical records from one vendor to another. We were moving to vendors to a new EMR package. And because of the uh, medical records requ uh, keeping requirements in the United States, uh, we needed to have a way to uh, to extract all of our all of uh, all of the medical records for her existing patients, um, and our vendor, uh, the old vendor, did not provide us with a, an API to use to be able to extract those. So uh, I, I I wrote a little Selenium script that 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 went through and 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 extracted all of the patient medical records. Um, uh, logging in appropriately with our, you know, with, 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 with the appropriate username and password. And, and so, you know, we didn't do anything that was, that, that was hack, hacking. Uh, but we, but, but we were able to extract all of that data so that we can, so that we can maintain it and archive it. Um, and before, uh, before moving, before moving on. Um, as for what I would use if I wasn't using Selenium, Selenium didn't exist. I probably some combination of, uh, com, uh, you know, IECOM and the what is now the Marionette protocol and the CDP to get cross-browser stuff working. Uh, you know, probably something like that. Nice. It's a very interesting use as well as potential alternate. Okay. <laughs> oh, who wants to go yeah. next? All right, I, I, I have some uh, spark, spark okay. in my memory. Okay, Manoj. Okay. Okay, go. Sorry, Nico. <laughs> um, so, interesting use case. Uh, I think the most recent one was automating the uh, e pass application. I think folks in India would know about it. Um, I was stuck in Bangalore. Um, I went for a project purpose and I was stuck there. And, and um, it's, it's a fun stuff automating that. Uh, I think there is an OTP part, but excluding that, uh, that was an interesting use case. And, you know, saved tons of time for me, and then luckily I got it uh, approved. So that's my product, successful production story, apart from uh, the work that I do to get paid. <laughs> and um, other things that I wanted to worth mention is, uh, is, a, is a person called Sudarshan. He's been doing excellent stuff with Selenium, like automating the, uh, the, the uh, T-Rex on, on the Google Chrome offline stuff that you could play with your keys. Um, and I think he's doing tons of stuff using Selenium and all those are interesting cases. And and and, and as, as the uh, uh, tagline in the selenium.dev, if you've been there, it says uh, Selenium used for browser automation, but then 
you know, uh, you can use it up to whatever you want, and and it's all up to you. And I think that's that's the tagline, and then uh, those use cases are pretty good. For example, for that, and uh, what I would be using if it's not Selenium. Um, so honestly, um, when I started my career, Selenium and uh, there was one other tool that I was got introduced to, and I got into Selenium since then, and I never looked back. Um, so possibly, if not Selenium, then it would be Sahi. Sahi uh, from Narayan Raman, I think. Cool. Yeah, my my use case is uh, I run a meetup here in Berlin, uh, and London, and Barcelona, and the thing is that. We have a Slack workspace, uh, but the custom emojis in the Slack workspace are a bit boring. So we managed to upload all the parrots uh, through a Selenium script. And I'm actually posting the LinkedIn thing. Uh, there is a video showing that there. Uh, so that's how I managed to, because when you have a free space, you cannot upload uh, emojis in a bulk way. Uh, so that's that's how I did it. and. Small parenthesis, if somebody wants to see a page that is easy to automate, go to the web client of Slack. They have all the uh, selectors that can be chosen in a, in a very simple way. Uh, and if uh, the Selenium didn't exist, I, I think I would be probably back to Colombia. I did my master's in Sweden, and then I found a job in Germany, and it was doing API testing, which I didn't find amusing. When I switched to WebDriver, I actually fell in love with the profession of testing and, and the whole industry. Uh, so. Basically, I'm here because the project is, is alive and exists. Thank you, Diego. Sri? Yes, I'll be going next. So uh, there are two use cases. I've used Selenium in an interesting way, but uh, I'm pretty sure that most of people have used in the same way. Uh, basically, I use Selenium uh, to uh, log my attendance in the, my company, current company, and also to trigger my EOD mails. <laughs> And to the fun part, a uh, few times I use Selenium to book train tickets in India. <laughs> it happens because uh, in Indian railway system is a bit busy. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so if not Selenium, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, uh, I'll be using what Jason Huggins has, Jason Huggins has invented uh, before Selenium of if not Selenium. Uh, I, I, that leaves me then. Um, the grand irony is I've used Selenium to fill out timesheets. <laughs> um, for, the, for those of you that don't know, Selenium was created to uh, help test the timesheet software at ThoughtWorks. Uh, so it's a nice sort of circular reference, uh, and uh, I've, I've done it. It's great. Um, if I wasn't using, if I wasn't, if Selenium didn't exist, I I would be full out build nerd at this point. Like I love build tools and how you construct software and making that really efficient. So I would be sort of neck deep in that i am neck deep in it already but i'd be even deeper in <laughs> <laughs> well great uh well, thank you everyone for sharing that three there are already comments coming in that your boss is also in the uh, <laughs> attendance so oops, <laughs> you spoke a bit too loud <laughs> but no worries you're in the virtual space so <laughs> all good at least for now but um Anyway, thank you so much, uh, gentlemen. It's been really an honor to be hosting this panel discussion. We have uh, actually exceeded our time, and we could not even get through half the questions that were there. Uh, but I want to take this opportunity to thank you again. Thank you to the Selenium Project, to the committee members, you guys, and the ones who are not in front of us right now on the screen. So thank you to everyone on behalf of uh, all the uh, users of Selenium now and in the future. And we look forward to seeing you in the next Selenium conference, if not before that. So thank you, uh, all the attendees, uh, for participating as well. And with this, uh, we conclude yet another version of Selenium conference, except that closing note, which we'll all move to now. So thank you again, and see you in the closing note. Thank you very much, folks. Yeah, thank you.